Good day everyone, welcome back to our lecture series on human rights based education for criminology students and law enforcers. We are now discussing about human rights based checkpoints. What are, to, what are the things to do and to be, obs and to be observed by law enforcers, law enforcers while conducting checkpoints? Checkpoints must be staffed by uniformed police personnel in complete uniform with ID plates and if available ID cards. So if you are a police officer, if you are police officers or law enforcement agents, when you conduct checkpoints, you must be in full uniform with name plates and if available ID cards. You should not conduct it uh, not wearing uniform or in civilian clothes. So uh, you must, uh, it must be led by a police commission officer. So must have at least a rank of uh, inspector or right now a lieutenant for the Philippine National uh, Police. Then in major cities, do not wear battle dress uniforms except when uh, conducting hot pursuit. Uh, you must also remember that you must uh, make your checkpoints. Uh, the, the goal of checkpoints is to make people feel safe and secure and not to intimidate the people. So if there are volunteer groups like Barangay Tanods during checkpoints who will join you, they must wear also their uniforms, the Barangay Tanods, and IDs if they have. Then these volunteer groups, the Tanods, are not authorized to bear firearms. So only you as law enforcement officers um, must bear firearms. Then on, only act, this voluntary group must, as, uh, must act only as observers or spotters. Then use official PNP marked vehicles during checkpoints. So if you notice uh, during checkpoints, the, our law enforcement officers or the Philippine National Police, they use their marked vehicle. They, uh, that you, you will easily know, uh, identify that they are police officers because they are using their marked or named vehicles. The, on their vehicles, there, are, there is a name of Philippine National Police and so on and so forth. And they have even uh, signages. They use signages in conducting patro uh, in checkpoints. Then always use courteous language. So be respectful, be courteous in, uh, in interacting with with drivers, with pedestrians, even rude drivers and pedestrians, so act courteously. So, example script. Magandang umaga, gabi po. Uh, police checkpoint lang po ito. Pasensya na po sa kaunting abala. Maraming salamat po. And good morning, evening. This is police checkpoint. Please bear with us a slight inconvenience. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Then, good morning, sir or ma'am. Our apologies for the slight inconvenience. We are conducting this checkpoint because there was a bank robbery earlier and we wanted to increase security uh, measures to protect and the public and to arrest the suspect as soon, as soon as possible. Thank you for your cooperation. Then, in Filipino, magandang umaga gabi po. Police checkpoint lang po ito. Pasensya na po kung konting abala. Nagkaroon po ng bank robbery kanina. Kaya, kaya po naghigpit po tayo ng security para na rin po sa kaligtasan ng publiko at para mahuli natin ang mga suspect. Maraming salamat po sa cooperation ninyo. So, so it depends on the locality. So if you are in the Visayas, uh, in, for example here in Dumaguete City, you use Cebuano. If you are in Cebu City, you use Cebuano. If you are in Bacolod, if you are in Iloilo, use their dia dia dialects also there. So, However, if you uh, encounter foreigners, so if they are, um, if they understand English, you use English. Then search in checkpoints, how to do it. So observe the plain view doctrine. So if you are conducting a, a checkpoint, conducting a checkpoint, you are limited to plain view doctrine only. What does uh, plain view doctrine uh, mean? Plain view doctrine is that what your eyes or what your eyes can see or what, you're, uh, what you can reach uh, by your hand and your eyes, those are the only things that you can search. So only pure uh, plain view, uh, so only visual search. You are not allowed to open the trunk of the vehicle, you are not allowed to open uh, the U-box of the motorcycle. So as a law enforcement officer, you do not have the right that, uh, to do that. Then the, the driver can refuse you, you know, can refuse opening his windows 
can refuse opening the trunk, can refuse opening the 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 U box. So he has the right to do that. No, because your right, your power, your authority as a law enforcement officer in checkpoints is only limited up to visual search. So observe plain view doctrine. So do not conduct physical search or require the passengers to alight from the vehicle. So do not, when you are conducting a checkpoint, you have no power to ask the driver to go out or to alight from the vehicle. So you do not have the right to do that except in exigent circumstances except when uh, upon plain view uh, you have seen inside the vehicle that there are a lot of firearms so you have now the the, the, the probable cause no? to, to ask the persons uh, to conduct an extensive search so after you have seen the firearms on the for example on the seat front seat or the back seat you have seen a lot of firearms through visual search only, plain, plain view uh, search only. Uh, you can search uh, through your flashlight, uh, but you cannot open the windows. Uh, but if when you upon seeing the firearms, then you can ask the person to go out to open the the vehicle and conduct the, the extensive search. So this is what I said: extensive search can only be made upon probable cause. So there is a question: What if, what if there is a tip? Uh, tip information so as police officers you have received a phone call or a text message through your official phone line in the police station and then you have been directed by your chief of police to go and conduct a checkpoint because of that tip information that a uh, vehicle is carrying uh, a lot of marijuana then you conduct a checkpoint then you see the vehicle approaching matching the tip information now can you stop the vehicle? Yes, you can stop the vehicle uh, because you are conducting a checkpoint. However, you are only limited to plain view search because of the tip information. However, upon conducting a visual search, you, uh, for example, you ask, you ask the person, what is that bag? What is that? What are the contents of that bag? What is that bag? What is that? Oh, it smells. Uh, then you conduct, and then you ask him, what is that bag? And then if he says. Uh, if he acts suspiciously, uh, attempts to run, attempts to flee, um, after asking, after uh, uh, saying that, oh, that bag, uh, uh, that smells, uh, it smells like uh, marijuana, then, and so on and so forth, it smells like a dangerous drug here. Then you have, uh, for example, you have a dog, uh, the dog is a drug sniffing dog, then the, 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 the dog signals that there's really. Uh, drug inside the vehicle so you have now the probable cause so it's not enough that there's only a tip information you must have other reasons not to conduct extensive search and these reasons are called probable cause these are the facts and circumstances for you to believe that a crime is being committed or has just been committed and you can conduct extensive search so not only visual search so these are difference between visual search and extensive search again in checkpoints the general rule is you conduct only visual search so through your eyes only you cannot compel the person to go out the open the trunk open the u-box however if there are any other reasons the person acting suspiciously attempts to run attempts to flee and so on and so forth after questioning him and so on and so forth so there's already other reasons aside from the tip information so you can conduct now extensive search you can open a trunk open the, the vehicle uh, order the persons inside the vehicle to alight from the vehicle and conduct extensive search and in hot pursuits do not use warning shots so this uh, policy in the philippine national police uh, while chasing an offender do not use warning shots so you might uh, you might be liable, administratively liable if you use warning shots. If, if you hit other persons, so you might be criminally liable also. Then stop person, persons not required and must not be forced to answer any questions. So if you stop a vehicle, moving vehicle, so those, those persons have the right to remain silent. You cannot force them to answer questions. And not answering the question is not a basis for probable cause. So it's not, it's not a basis for extensive search. Just because the person you ask driving 
uh, does not answer you, is that the reason for you to open the trunk and conduct extensive search or open the vehicle or ask him to go out? Then use reasonable force only to overcome the suspect's aggression. So while chasing a vehicle, for example, you, uh, the general rule is do not shoot the vehicle when you are chasing it. Unless when they shoot back to you, you can apply reasonable force. So you can shoot the, the tire if you can do that. Otherwise, you just use a megaphone and use other techniques in blocking the offender's path. So that's it for human rights based, uh, human rights based uh, checkpoints. We will now discuss the human rights based seizures.